Okay, we're going to start. We are done with mythology. I mean, I'll do some more uh, videos of mythology, reading different myths, but now we're going to move on to the section about Greek literature. So mythology really, I, su I suppose, is a form of literature, but what's different is we don't know the authors of all the different mythologies that were have become so popular for people to read today. Uh, there isn't one author, and they weren't written down. It was an oral tradition, meaning there were stories that were told uh, orally. And actually, that, that's the same that's going to be true for the Iliad and the Odyssey. But we do have an author who it's attributed to, Homer. Um, so this is, so mythologies isn't included under literature, even though they are stories, uh, but they weren't stories that were told in the exact same way. Um, there's so many different, you'll see uh, so many different Greek myths and so many different Roman myths, and there's different vocabulary, different language, maybe even the stories themselves are a little bit different because they changed over time because they're like they're, I said they were just told orally. Uh, but the Iliad is associated with the author Homer and the Odyssey. He wrote those two poems. Um, and while there might be different translations of the Greek, um, it's the same story, right? Um, it's it's uh, so that's a piece of literature as opposed to mythology that has all sorts of different authors and you know, the, the story would change with whoever was retelling it, and we don't associate any of those mythologies really with a certain author. Now today when you buy a book, then it will have an author, uh, but that's the author taking all sorts of different traditions about myths and, and creating her own version. Okay, so here we go. The works of the ancient Greek writers, such as Homer, Sappho, and Aesop, are still alive and popular today. Not the people, the works. In fact, Greek literature has influenced modern language, literature, and art. Did you know that some of the words you see, you use, and some of the stories you hear come from ancient Greece? Wait a minute. I think I didn't go up far enough. Ah, oh, sorry. Well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> and it's still relevant, so sorry. Because the Greeks love myths and stories, it's no surprise that they created great works of literature. Early Greek writers produced epic, long epic poems. And that's what we're going to focus on for the most time today. Uh, an epic poem, epic in this sense just means really long, right? So we talked about the Epic of Gilgamesh. We talked about the Bhagavad Gita in um, India. Uh, epic of Gilgamesh was Mesopotamia. Um, there's all sorts of different epic poems. So they are a long story, a long narrative um, that's just told in poem form because we didn't have the novel yet. We, don't have, we won't have the novel for quite some time. So today, if you read an epic poem, it'll look like, you know, when, when it's bound, it'll look like a novel. When you open it up, you'll see it's written in poem form. It's just an extremely long poem with thousands of lines. So that is what the Iliad and the Odyssey are. So that's what we're going to focus on. But then we'll talk, we will eventually talk about romantic poetry. That's Sappho, where it was below. And some of the world's most famous stories, those are fables from Aesop. And, and that was what was, um, what I listed there in that little wrong paragraph I just read. Um, so I used to teach the, uh, the sections of the Odyssey when I taught ninth grade, and it's just such a fantastic story. Uh, so it's of course features gods and monsters and all that, but mostly it features heroes. So we're going to read a little excerpt uh, from the Iliad um, at the end of this video. Um, but they're both written by this guy, Homer. Um, and there's, you know, a drawing of him, but we really have no idea what he would have looked like. So some, I'll read this, but I don't really agree with certain, certain parts of it. So time period that he lived is really kind of unknown, you know, exactly. It's one of those things when it's like circa 800s and 700s BC. Historians know nothing about Homer, the greatest poet of the ancient world. Not nothing, okay. Um, some don't even think such a person ever lived. I'm not one of those people. I definitely believe he lived. The ancient Greeks believed he had, though, and several, seven different cities claimed to be his birthplace. According to the ancient legend, Homer was blind and recited the Iliad and the Odyssey aloud. It wasn't until much later that the poems were written down. Uh, it's also because stories were told orally anyway, but eventually they're written down and we credit Homer with being the author, the blind poet. Um, all right, two epic poems, the Iliad and the Odyssey by a poet named Homer. Like most epics, both poems describe the deeds of great heroes. The heroes in Homer's poems fought in the Trojan War. In this war, the Mycenaean Greeks fought the Trojans, the people of a city called Troy. Uh, 
So the Greeks are the people that, you know, are the heroes, you know, in this one. Um, and they eventually defeat Troy. That's mostly what the Iliad is about. It's a why the war starts. Um, Helen of Troy being stolen by Paris. We'll talk more about that myth later. Um, and that's why, so we have the war that starts. And then we have all these different men who are called to fight to return Helen of Troy to her rightly, her, her true husband. It was not Paris. Um, so that's really what the war is. And it's between the Greeks and the Trojans. Uh, and Trojan means people from the city of Troy. And eventually the Trojans lose and their city is destroyed. And then one of the most famous Trojans uh, flees Troy and eventually helps establish the city of Rome. So we have this connection between Greek epics and Roman epics, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, the Odyssey, on the other hand, if you know what the word Odyssey means, it just means a long journey. I could say, I'm going on an Odyssey to drive all the way to Michigan from California with my family or something. And that would be an Odyssey with lowercase o. Uppercase o is the Odyssey named after the main character Odysseus. So we have the char character Odysseus in Greek, Ulysses in Latin. So if you see Ulysses, that means Odysseus. It's just in a different language. So Odysseus, and then the title of the play, or the title of the poem becomes The Odyssey. And then the word eventually meant long journey because it's all about this guy, Odysseus, who after this Trojan War is over, which is what mainly the Iliad is about, he then has to travel back home to Ithaca, back to his wife and his son. And then it's about his 10 year journey. It takes him 10 years, you know, a journey that should not take nearly that long. It takes him 10 years to get back because he has angered the god Poseidon by harming his son Polyphemus the Cyclops. But we'll talk more about that stuff later. Okay, so um, in this war, the Mycenaeans, oh, I said that, the Iliad tells the story of the last years of the Trojan War. It focuses on the deeds of the Greeks, especially Achilles. And I'm gonna read an excerpt about Achilles there. That is how you spell it. You've probably heard the word Achilles because of the Achilles heel and the Greek myth that goes along about dipping him in the river Styx and the mother is holding him by his heel. So therefore that is his only vulnerable spot. Uh, still a very vulnerable spot today. And that's the myth, you know, that's created around how vulnerable that part of your foot is. So we'll talk about Achilles, that's how you spell it. It's, a, it's very Greek looking with the C-H pronounced as a K. Um, so it's about Achilles, the greatest of all Greek warriors. It describes in detail the battles between the Greeks and their Trojan enemies. The Odyssey, as I said, describes the challenges of the Greek hero Odysseus faced on his way home from war. For 10 years after the war ends, Odysseus tries to get home, but many obstacles stand in his way. He has to fight past terrible monsters, powerful magicians, and even angry gods. So I'll read you an excerpt from that later, not today. Both the Iliad and the Odyssey are great tales of adventure, but to the Greeks, Homer's poems were much more than entertainment. Um, so you should have already written down a few notes about what is the Iliad about, what is the Odyssey about, write down some details about Homer, a blind poet who memorized his poems. That's why they rhyme. They would often be sung because it's much easier to remember things that rhyme. He also would very fre frequently repeat the way he would describe things. I, I think I said in an earlier video, he always described Athena as gray-eyed Athena. He always described the, sea, the ocean as the wine-dark sea. So those different repetitions and then the rhyming at the end of um, the lines would help him recite it. Um, so those are all the things that, that you can add under in the notes there. Um, but, and now I, what, what I want you to add, yes, they were adventure. It was exciting to read the stories, but it was also more than that. So they were central to the education system. Students memorized long passages as part of their lessons. Um, and they admired Homer's poems and the heroes described in them as symbols of Greece's great history. So what I also want you to add is the, these, these stories, the Iliad and the Odyssey, were supposed to teach lessons and, and reflect Greek values. So I want you to write something about um, the fact that Greeks thought it was really important to be a good host, to be hospitable. So we see many times in the Odyssey, um, Odysseus is, is welcomed uh, as a guest in, in people's homes or in a palace in some cases. Or when he's not, right, that, that angers the gods. Hospitality was a really important value that the Greeks had. 
which is if someone is a stranger, you invite them in, you give them food, you give them shelter, you help them maybe with a boat, you know, if they need to sail home or give them supplies. So you can see in the telling of the story, not only the entertainment, not only the educational value, the rhyming and the complexity of the of the poetry, but also it shows well, what did Greeks value? They of course valued the gods and listening to the gods and believed how powerful the gods were, but they also really valued what it meant to be a good host and to welcome in those who need help, and that's reflected too. But also things we'll see how Odysseus uh, does makes foolish choices, right? Um, You'll see his men will make foolish choices, like their curiosity will ruin their trip and lead to their death or uh, other things like that. So it all also shows to trust the gods and to not be foolish, that if the gods tell you something is going to happen and that you need to follow their instruction, don't assume that you're smarter than the gods. Uh, assume that the gods are the ones that are in control. And if you put yourself higher than the gods, like in that reading comprehension about uh, Arachne, um, you will be you will be punished. So lots of details that you can add to your notes about about um, Greek um, poetry and specifically the Iliad and the Odyssey. Homer's poems influenced later writers. They copied his writing styles and borrowed some of the stories and ideas he wrote about in his works. Homer's poems are considered some of the greatest literary works ever produced. Um, this story, the story of the sirens here, these birds, half woman, half bird, you'll see references to the sirens throughout literature. It's a great example of an allusion, um, allusion, remember we talked about with Lizzie Bright, when you're referencing a different piece of literature. So you might even hear someone say, oh, I couldn't resist the siren call of the ice cream in my freezer at night. It means that's a that's an allusion to the Odyssey. And what the person means when they say that or write that is it's the sirens were something who they would sing beautiful songs so that the men and sailors going by wouldn't be able to resist their their music and what they would do is they'd start steering their ships toward the sirens and then they'd crash the against the rocks and on some stories the sirens would eat the men and other stories that would just be the way that they would die as they'd crash against the rocks and die so when you say the siren song pulled me it means like something something that's that's pulling you somewhere um, that maybe you don't want to go or that wouldn't uh, that will maybe lead you to do something you don't want to do well, that's not the case in ice cream ice cream is always something to indulge in <laughs> okay so it says in Homer's Odyssey, the half woman, half bird siren sang sweet songs that made passing sailors forget everything and crash their ships. To trick the sirens, Odysseus plugged the crew's ears with wax and had himself tied to the ship's mast. Odysseus, so you see all the men, they can't hear it because they have their ears plugged. But we can see the sirens trying to lure them. Um, and then this is the other half of the picture. He, though, is so curious. He wants to hear what the siren song sounds like, but he tells his men, no matter what I do, don't untie me no matter how I beg and plead. And sure enough, he begs and pleads and they can't hear him because their ears are plugged. And then they survive because Odysseus doesn't um, get untied and doesn't tell the men to, to turn around or whatever. Okay, um, I am going to read to you a little bit about Achilles. So flip to the page or just follow me here. I'm gonna do it kind of quickly because according to my timer, I only have a minute and 20 seconds. So uh, this is a translation because of course it's originally in Greek. The Iliad describes one part of a ten-year war between the Greeks and the city of Troy. As the poem opens, the Greek hero Achilles has left the battle to wait for help from the gods. When he learns that his best friend Patroclus is dead, however, Achilles springs back into action. In this passage, the angry Achilles sprints across the plain towards Troy and Hector, the great Trojan warrior who has killed his friend. So we've got Achilles the Greek, Hector the Trojan, fighting. Then toward the town with might and and mane he ran magnificent like a racing chariot horse that holds its form and at full stretch on the plain. I'll stop here. Uh, Homer loves to use similes. They're even named after him called Homeric similes. So you'll see that very often. So light-footed Achilles, again, he would repeat that description. Light-footed Achilles, light-footed Achilles held the pace. I'm not going to finish here, so I'm just going to read as much as I can, and if it cuts me off, that's okay, I'll pick up later. An aging Priam was the first to see him, sparkling on the plain, bright, another simile, as that star in autumn rising, whose unclouded rays shone out, 
among the throng of stars at dusk. 